What if I told you that Baryon mode would not be the strongest mode that Naruto will ever achieve? What if I told you that Naruto would achieve a new mode that would be significantly stronger than Baryon mode and I can pretty much prove it? You see, most people would split up into two camps. The first camp would say, it's not Naruto's show anymore. Why would he get an upgrade? And the second camp would say, I'm listening. I got something for both camps. Before I get to explaining to you about how Naruto is going to achieve godlike power, guys, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, hit that noty bell. If you guys feel like giving me godlike power, guys, please follow my other two YouTube pages. The first of which is NC Gamer 23, where I play video games like Subnautica, and the other is Hammer's Collection, where I unpack anime statues just like this one. Before we get into all that, guys, today we have a brand new sponsor to the page, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is the world's most transparent VPN, meaning that there's no shady dealings with your data. It is secure, and they will show you that. This company is no joke. Over 30 million people have already downloaded it. You can use private internet access to browse anonymously on the internet. On top of that, private internet access is incredibly customizable. It allows you to play with your settings to block ads, trackers, and even malware. But I think we all know the real reason we're getting into VPNs nowadays. We live in the age of streaming services, and some streaming services have different things available in different countries. And let's be real, you're not gonna fly to a different country just because their Netflix is a little bit better but you know what you can do you can change your ip address to that of let's say japan and boom just like that you have gone from having seven seasons of one piece on your american netflix to 37 seasons of one piece on japanese netflix and this doesn't even just apply to one piece if you go to the website unogs.com you can actually type in any anime that you're looking for and see what country it's available in. Whether it's Italy, India, France, or Japan, if you have private internet access, you have access to it. So what are you guys waiting for? Follow the link in my pinned comment in my description below for 82% off in three months free. What are you guys waiting for? Go and make the most out of your streaming services. You know, one of the nicest parts about Naruto as a show is the fact that it's over. Whoa, the guy who talks about Naruto all the time on his YouTube page doesn't want more Naruto content. That couldn't be further from the truth. It's how I cut my paycheck. But what's nice about Naruto Naruto being over is that we can confidently say whether or not the theories we had about the show were correct or incorrect. A show coming to an end leaves no gray space for theories. It's kind of like with One Piece right now. We don't know what the One Piece is and we won't know till the end of the show. But while Naruto was running, there was a time where we didn't know who the leader of the Akatsuki was and everybody thought it was Minato brought back to life. We don't have those kinds of theories for Naruto anymore because over but naruto is still technically running with boruto and once again we are now having gray areas introduced and a lot of those gray areas tend to revolve around naruto for those of you who haven't watched boruto or somehow been living under a rock and haven't heard any of the boruto spoilers boruto spoilers ahead but recently as in like the last year or year and a half we had a couple of big things happen to naruto most specifically we had baryon mode pop off and i've done entire videos describing baryon mode and how it works but essentially Eventually, Naruto and Kurama collided their chakra into each other, and by destroying that chakra, they made a new form of energy. Only problem is, once the chakra is destroyed, that chakra is gone forever. Conservation of mass doesn't exist in the Naruto world, apparently. But since that chakra is gone forever and tailed beasts are made of only chakra, Kurama died. As to whether or not that means Naruto had more chakra than Kurama, and therefore Kurama ran out of chakra first, and that's why Naruto still lives, we don't really know. Some people hypothesize that Kurama purposely output more chakra than Naruto so that he would die and Naruto would live. But basically, the only concrete thing we can take away from this is Kurama's dead. It was quite literally the first this kind of YouTube video I ever did. And now there's theories about whether Kurama can come back to life. Like I said, it was the first YouTube video like this I ever posted. That's not what we're talking about today. No, today we're not talking about ways Naruto could become as strong as he once was or even get Kurama back. Today we're talking about a way Naruto could become even stronger than he was. Maybe even stronger than Boruto will ever achieve. A way Naruto could achieve a power so absolute he could protect the entirety of the earth and not just have to focus on protecting Konoha. You see, with the death of Kurama, Naruto is now kind of an empty vessel. And he's not only an empty vessel, he's a much weaker base version of himself without Kurama. Because remember, all the chakra that he collided with Kurama is gone. He can never recover that. Sakura, when she was tending to his wounds after his recovery from Baryon mode, said that he had lost about half of his total chakra. And while Naruto's chakra reserves were insane to begin with, halving his chakra makes him 
significantly weaker. But Naruto's not old. He's half Uzumaki, which means he's gonna live longer than your average human being. I mean, you could technically make the point that losing Kurama as a Jinchuriki should shorten his lifespan, but losing Kurama in the first place should have killed him. So we can assume that the rules around Baryon mode are a little bit different, even though they technically shouldn't be. He lost his tail beast as a Jinchuriki. He should die. Ishimoto forgot. But if we assume there's some reason that Naruto suffered no repercussions from Kurama's death outside of the loss of a massive amount of his chakra, and we can assume he's got a lot of life left in him. And if we know anything about Naruto, he's got a fighting spirit and also an incredibly high drive to protect those around him. You see, Naruto never spends any time with his family because he says all of Konoha is his family. A weird excuse to be a deadbeat dad, but it's the one that he uses. But what if Naruto could expand his family from Konoha to the entirety of the world? Well, there's a way for him to do that now that he's an empty vessel. You see, we know that there's an extra 10 tails outside of the Kara hideout. And it's not a full grown 10 tails, it's technically a juvenile 10 tails. This 10 tails was brought by Ishiki and Kaguya. Why was that 10 tails brought by Ishiki and Kaguya? We don't know because they also brought the ten tails that was split into the nine tailed beasts. Well, actually, technically, a world seed fell off of a comet onto Earth, and then that grew into a world tree, and then Kaguya took the world tree inside of her and became a ten tails. But I think that's retconned now. We've done videos about it. But regardless, there is a ten tails on Earth, sort of. It's in the car dimension. I'm not entirely sure whether or not that's on Earth. And what do we know about ten tails from history? There's no real way to kind of just get rid of them. Hagoromo and Hamura fought Kaguya as the ten tails for months. And these were two high-level Otsutsukis. And in fact, to end the fight using the Moon and Sun Seal, they had to pull the Ten Tails out of Kaguya and put it into Hagoromo so they could seal Kaguya and the husk of the Ten Tails into the Moon. Well, they technically created the Moon with their seal. For those of you who don't remember Chibuka Tensai, what the Sun and Moon Seal is essentially makes whoever you tag with it a huge gravity well that pulls all of the rocks near them onto them and forms a kind of moon. Naruto, that's how the moon was created by Hagoromo and Hamuro, and then Hamura had to go to the moon to keep an eye on Mami. And then later on in the fourth great Shinobi World War, an extra moon was made, but that was sent into Kaguya's dimension. That's why we don't have two moons. Regardless, they couldn't use Shibuka Tensai on Kaguya in Ten Tails form. They had to pull the Ten Tails out because Kaguya in this form would be too powerful to be sealed like that. Nagato tried to use his technique on Naruto and Kurama, and Kurama himself was able to claw out of it. While Kurama is technically the strongest of all the tailed beasts, and is stronger than all the other tailed beasts combined, that's still probably only 40 to 50% of the Ten Tails power. So juvenile Ten Tails or not, you're probably not sealing it away with this technique. I mean, if we're being entirely honest, this technique wasn't even truly strong enough to seal the husk of the Ten Tails. Because once again, for those of you who don't remember, the husk of the Ten Tails is the ghetto statue. And Madara was able to pull the ghetto statue off of the moon and back to Earth using his Rinnegan, which is why Nagato was able to summon it because it was tied to the same Rinnegan. So even just the husk of the Ten Tails is strong enough to break out of Shibuka Tensai. And you can say, Nick, well, they could use something like Death Reaper seal on it. But there's a reason Minato is only able to seal half of Kurama into the Shinigami's stomach. Death Reaper seal works by comparing the person who's using it to the person it's being used on. More specifically, it compares their chakra levels. If I'm using Death Reaper Seal and I have 100 chakra, but the person I'm using it on has 120 chakra, I can only pull out 100 chakra from them. But that 100 chakra manifests as their soul. This is why Hiruzen was only able to pull out Orochimaru's arms. Now, should you get somebody's torso, which would only be about 50% of their soul, you can still kill them with this. But that's because you're using it on a person who has a heart and a brain and lungs. This rule does not apply to tailed beasts because tailed beasts are not anatomical. They are just chakra. So if you pull out 50% of their soul, you're only pulling out 50% of their chakra. They can exist as a weaker form of themselves. But if you pulled out half of my soul and that half of my soul was my torso and not my legs, I would die because I couldn't breathe and my heart wouldn't beat and my brain wouldn't function. So even if you sent the person who has the most chakra on earth, which is probably Kaurin, to seal the Ten Tails using Death Reaper Seal, she wouldn't be able to get all of its chakra. And then you would just have a slightly weaker, pissed off Ten Tails. Karin would be dead. Maybe. Technically, we don't know if full-blooded Uzumakis can use Death Reaper Seal and survive. It's a theory. So that only really leaves us with one way to get rid of this Ten Tails, and that would be the same way the Hagoromo and Hamura got rid of theirs. See, Hagoromo and Hamura had to fight Kaguya to this point of exhaustion so that the Ten Tails would reject from her and then they could take the Ten Tails and put it into Hagoromo. Obviously, the whole absorbing a world tree and becoming a Ten Tails has kind of been retconned now and there's no Ten Tails in Turkey. 
anybody has to fight so that the Tentails can reject that Jinchuriki, so there's less to focus on. There is just essentially the world's strongest tailed beast locked outside of the bad guy's headquarters. And Naruto, who was able to contain the entirety of Kurama, is now an empty vessel. Inquisitive minds are starting to see where I'm going with this. Obviously, Momoshiki's current plan is to feed Kawaki to said ten tails and have it grow into a world tree so he can eat the chakra fruit from it and gain more power. This works because of the retcon we got from the Otsutsuki saying essentially the lower ranked Otsutsuki in a pairing of Otsutsukis gets fed to a ten tails that creates a world tree and then bing bang boom, you eat the chakra fruit and you're on your way to becoming an Otsutsuki god. But the thing is, obviously, that would be really bad for Naruto, Boruto, Kawaki, everybody. Boruto obviously doesn't want Momushiki winning, Kawaki doesn't want to be fed to a Tentails, and Naruto doesn't want the entire world to be destroyed. What does Naruto do then? Well, in order to stop Momushiki from being able to feed Kawaki to the Tentails, Naruto has to become the Tentails Jinchuriki. Now, this is a last resort's last resort. Ideally, they would be able to defeat Momoshiki, and they wouldn't have to worry about Kawaki being fed to the Ten Tails, and everybody gets to live on their own normal happy life. But you can't ignore the presence of a Ten Tails for long. I mean, yes, it's kind of under wraps right now by the Kara hideout, but what happens when it becomes fully grown? It doesn't matter how powerful Boruto or Kawaki become, these are not higher level Otsutsukis who are going to keep an eye on a Ten Tails forever. This Ten Tails has to be dealt with. Mind you, the Ten Tails terraformed the earth. I'm talking about the first Ten Tails. It literally created the mountains and split the oceans. Naruto says it has no physical will, personality, or emotion. He used sage mode to perceive whether or not he could talk no jutsu it. It is just a sheer ball of chakra that will destroy everything near it. So in a final act of desperation, Naruto will take this beast inside of him and thus guarantee that Kawaki is never fed to it and that a world tree never grows. But once Naruto Naruto takes in the Ten Tails, a couple of things could happen. One, in his weakened state, it could kill him. It could reject. I mean, we saw this happen to both Obito and Madara. And the only reason Obito survived the Ten Tails leaving him is because Naruto is Ninja Jesus for a little while there. So him taking in the Ten Tails is incredibly dangerous. The second thing that could happen, which would be more positive, is that Naruto would now be a Ten Tails Jinchuriki. But as a Ten Tails Jinchuriki, he would have a new set of roles. Naruto would essentially become an Otsutsuki. He will get access to the Keke Mora. Keke Mora like Ash All Killing Bone or the True Secret Orbs or the Sword of Nunabuko. We know that he would gain access to these things because both Madara and Obito, who weren't related to Kaguya or Hagaromo, got access to them when they became Ten Tails and Cherokees. Well, maybe not Ash All Killing Bone, but the other ones. But Naruto's already had access to these things in the war. No. Naruto has Yin Yang release, which means that he can control Keke Mora. Because a Keke Mora, for those of you who need a quick crash course, is when you combined all all five basic chakra natures and yin and yang. And they are specific to descendants of Kaguya and Ten Tail Jin Churiki. Hagoromo gifted Naruto true seeker orbs in the war. Arm. And because he has control over all seven releases, he was able to control those true seeker orbs. But you need creation of all things jutsu to be related to Kaguya or to be a Ten Tails Jin Churiki to create a Keke Mora. Which is why, after Naruto's true seeker orbs were either sent to the bottom of a lake or destroyed or lost in Kaguya's dimension, Mention, he couldn't create any more. That's why we don't see him use them now. With becoming a Tentailed Jinchuriki, though, he would get access to these Kekemora immediately. Not to mention, he would most likely awaken Rinnegan. You see, I say most likely because Rinnegan are usually tied to Hagaroma. The only reason that Madara awoke his is because he combined cells with Hashirama, which brought Indra and Ashura cells together, you know, to make Hagaroma. But what's also only tied to Hagaromo is the Rinne Sharingan, and technically Kaguya as well. The reason Madara awoke a Rinne Sharingan is because he had Indra and Ashura's blood, and then he became a Ten Tails and Jerky, which essentially made him the Sage of Six Paths, Hagaroma. The problem is, Obito didn't awaken a Rinnegan in his Sharingan eye when he took the Ten Tails into it, which points in the direction that taking the Ten Tails into you doesn't give you a Rinnegan. But should Naruto just take a literal vial of Sasuke's blood and shoot it into himself, he would not only awaken a Rinnegan, he would also awaken a Rinne Sharingan, because he would be in the exact same situation as Madara. Okay, cool. So now, hypothetically, Naruto has Rinnegan and a Rinne Sharingan. He would, in effect, become Hagoromo, but alive Hagoromo, not dead Hagoromo. That's important. 
and then he used that power to travel across the world for decades and spread ninshu but he was nowhere near as powerful as he would become after he died but by becoming the ten tails in Turkey, he gained creation of all things jutsu which is what allowed him to separate the ten tails into the nine tailed beasts essentially creation of all things jutsu allows hagoromo to take chakra and mold it into whatever he wants think of the biblical way that god formed eve out of adam's rib that's essentially what we're talking about here but after hagoromo died he became the sage of six paths and ascended to a different plane of existence a plane of existence where he essentially became god well, why am i talking about hagoromo well, that's because that's essentially who Naruto would become. You see, Hakuromo has looked over the Earth for centuries. No, like quite literally, like over 2,000 years. And for those 2,000 years, his children have been reincarnated in a cycle, all to eventually bring his mother back that he had to help defeat in the Fourth Great Shinobi World War. Hakuromo imparted a large amount of his power to both Naruto and Sasuke, and hasn't been seen or heard from since. And as far as we know, since the cycle of hatred was broken between Indra and Ashra, there will be no more reincarnations. And since Kaguya is sealed in a different dimension, we can all but assume his task of keeping her away from Earth is done. Essentially, Hagoromo's fight is over. You see, he knew of the Ototsukis, but only as far as it pertained to his mother. So I would argue that the Sage of Six Paths might quite literally be no more. And even if he does still exist, he may not have the power he used to. You see, technically, Hagoromo does draw his power from the Pure Lands, which would give him a basically infinite source of chakra. So to say he's been weakened is technically not accurate. I'm more saying with the closing of his chapter, he might have actually just ascended to said Pure Lands, which would technically leave Earth without a protector. So should Naruto become a Ten Tails Jinchuriki and awaken something like a Rinisharingan and gain access to creation of all things Jutsu, there's a possibility he would have to become the new Sage of Six Paths. Gaining access to power like this could truly only really mean one thing for Naruto. Since when have we known Naruto to try and protect less people than he could? I truly believe that if Naruto came into this kind of power, he would look at the entire world as his family. And much like Hagoromo, he would wander the world protecting people or simply just ascend to the moon or a different plane of existence to keep an all-seeing eye on the earth to protect it. Or to go to the Otsutsuki realm with his newly found power to fight Otsutsuki gods. Regardless of which of these three paths he would take, it would still take Naruto away from Konoha and maybe even Earth, which some people wouldn't want. Most specifically, his children wouldn't want. And when I say children, I'm also talking about Kawaki. You see, I'm not just talking about this theory because I believe that Naruto is an empty vessel and therefore he's the only suitable person to take the Ten Tails inside of him. The first page of the Boruto manga also points us in this direction. You see, I don't assume either Boruto or Kawaki are gonna become evil. Why? Because that's basically the plot of Naruto and I don't think Kishimoto is trying to write Naruto 2.0. When Kawaki threatens to send Boruto to the same place he sent his father, I believe he's actually talking out of love. Kawaki refers to the ninja world being over, which to me means that the usefulness of ninjas has either dwindled to an all-time low or all the ninjas are gone. I happen to believe it's the former. I believe that Momushiki takes over Boruto's body, and Naruto in a last-ditch effort goes to absorb the Ten Tails inside of himself. But Kawaki, knowing what this would do to Naruto in terms of responsibility and the possibility of death, doesn't allow Naruto to do it. And therefore, he has to send Naruto to a different dimension, one that Naruto can't come back from because he knows if Naruto comes back, he will find his way to the Ten Tails and absorb it. But because of this, Boruto is Momushiki, he destroys the majority of the world. Now that we're talking about comma markings in Boruto and Kawaki, the usefulness of ninjas is at an all-time low. There's nothing the average ninja can do against Boruto or Kawaki. But Kawaki doesn't want to kill Boruto. They were raised brothers, sort of. So that's why Kawaki threatens to send Boruto to the same place he sent Naruto. A place where Boruto couldn't access the Ten Tails from but a place where none of them would be together. And then Naruto ascends as the next Sage of Six Paths. I think there's actually a precedent for this, because if you think about it, it would essentially be what Naruto does as Hokage, but elevated. And it would actually be an incredible writing moment for both Boruto and Naruto. But Boruto and his family would forgive him because finally they understand that it's his role to protect as many people as he can. It's a full circle moment for Naruto. Boruto allowing Naruto to become the Ten Tails Jinchuriki would be the perfect moment of acceptance 
or Boruto. And Naruto would become essentially the next god of Shinobi, where he would be able to look over not only his family, but everybody. He could even go so far as to mold part of the Ten Tails Chakra to recreate Kurama. But what do I know? The beauty of gray spaces is, is that this entire video could be incorrect. Let's all hope it's not incorrect though, because I really like my ending. What do you guys think? How do you guys think Boruto's gonna end? Do you care if it ends at all, guys? Tell me in the comments below. And while you're down there, please like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I'm not saying that the ending that I could write for Boruto would be better than the one Kishimoto could write, but <laughs> how did people like the ending to Shippuden again?